morning, morning, millennials. Happy Friday. Welcome back to the Morning Toast, our final show in studio before we take a hiatus for the month of August. We are so excited, honored, blessed, and humbled to be here with you one final time. We are. This is going to be such an exciting, fabulous show. I'm so, so excited for vacation, but I would be RDH. I would have that funny feeling in my Mm. stomach if I didn't just express the love that I have for the show and the community. And it's been a crazy few months for everyone across yes. the board. Unprecedented times, as they say. Truly. Um, but I personally couldn't have gotten through without this show. No and same. without everyone who has stuck by us and, and continues to love and watch the show. And we love doing it. So it's just been an integral part of our mental health. And I hope that it has been for you. And it's just been a crazy time. I hope everyone is really just doing the best that they can in yeah. the current circumstances. It ain't, it ain't easy out here no. for anyone. So we hope that you're just finding time for yourself and that this little pocket of peace, as my favorite TikTok Nabella says, I hope you're just finding little pockets of peace in your day and doing all that you can to not go crazy. Exactly. But other than that, wow, I can't believe it's Friday. 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 Gotta, gotta get, get down, down on Friday. Friday. Speaking of, I was on TikTok this morning. And on my video page, one of this one of these videos popped up that went viral, and it was a Rebecca Black video. She's like an influencer now. Yeah. Um, but she did like a whole sixty second video on her experience doing Friday because she gets asked all the time, like, okay. "Would you regret it?" And she was speaking so vague and so generally, like I didn't know what what exactly she was referring to. But I guess she got like bullied a lot online because the video was like viral, but people were making but fun in of a bad it. Way. Yeah, yeah, people were making fun of it mostly. And basically, what she said, which was actually like really profound thing, and she said she's been in therapy like a lot since then, that. Um, um, like t- try not to be mad at your younger self for like making decisions. Like you, you can't control it. And like, even though you were like dumb and weird in the in, back then, like that's who you are. So like, try not to hate yourself. And honestly, I felt that very deeply. Wow. That really strikes a chord. I know. And it's, it's so true because it's like, obviously she looks back on that video and she's like, why did I do that? Except I don't think she feels that way because she's famous now and she wouldn't be. And I think she actually has a, a pretty nice career for herself. Yeah. But I'm sure you cringe at your younger self, but it's like your younger self was just living her best life. And sure. Like it's not the choices you would make now, mm-hmm. but she was just trying to get through. No, I, A hundred percent. And I just thought that was like a really interesting take on it. And I wanted to share. No, I really, that really resonates with me. Thank you for sharing. Claudia, that's beautiful. Because I feel like we all like look back on certain times in our lives, like certain things we wore, certain things we said, and like we just hate ourselves because we're like so embarrassed by the people that we used to be. I'm very embarrassed by the person I used to be. You've blocked her out. And I have like so much shame and like I hate her. And hearing Rebecca Black say that, I was like, why do I hate myself? Like, and it was really, I don't know. It was like a, a fabulous thing to wake up to. No, it's really... It's really important to remember, and I, I remember when we were, it was the end of the year and we were doing our decade recap and our year recap, and this conversation came up a lot of when we were thinking back to like 2010, mm-hmm. and, and we were in high school mm-hmm. then, and we were just like full of shame. So much. And it's just like, yes, it's a little embarrassing, but she made you who you are, and you love yourself. And I... I couldn't agree more. Like, I think I'm so fabulous now. And I don't think I would be this fabulous if I wasn't a monster 10 years ago. So it's all good. It's not not nice to her. No, I know. It's all good. It's something I'm like really, really dealing with, like this shame that I feel. So I'm, I'm working on it. But hearing Rebecca Black going through the same thing, like made me feel seen. Yeah, no, that makes me feel very seen as well. And by the way, those episodes that I'm talking about are available on our Patreon channel, patreon.com slash the morning toast, where we talk about all of the big plans that we had for this year that obviously did not come to fruition. And it's never been a better time to become a Patreon member since we are going on hiatus. Reminder, we are switching to weekly episodes starting next week for the next five weeks. So you get five weekly episodes every Wednesday. We'll still be doing Dear Toasters, just recapping the fast five of the entire week as opposed to the entire day. Plus all the Real Housewives, because we have Beverly Hills, New York, and Potomac, Potomac. on right now and um chatting like we do right so patreon will be pertinent for the month of august because then you'll get five extra episodes there five weekly episodes then you got double the amount of episodes seven dollars and 99 cents for five extra episodes from jackie and i per month vlog episodes um podcast episodes and then you also get access to the facebook group which is for members only so it's seven dollars and 99 cents head over to patreon.com slash morning toast and check it out 
Love it. Sign on, get premium content. By the way, did you notice that I got a haircut? You know, I didn't notice because it looks exactly the same. Well, so what I asked for, uh, that's that's kind of what I wanted. I wanted to keep the length, but get a lot of like, la- mm, I'm sorry, it's just like choking me it's emotional. It's emotional. But get a lot of layers because I've been wearing my hair kind of straight on the show mostly because I don't have the time to curl it. And it looks kind of, it just hangs there and I kind of look like I'm in a cult. Mm-hmm. And so this just gives it a little bit more natural body. It looks great. And it's also like, you know, I just kind of like like mom haircuts. Yeah. So these are, this is my new look. I read a tweet over the weekend that like fully attacked me. Oh, really? Yeah, and it was like grown women over 25, like stop having long hair. I'm like, excuse me? Excuse- you stop having long hair. Don't tell me what to do. That's so interesting. Like, is that a, is that a common way of thinking? So I think a com- that's a very extreme tweet. I think a common way of thinking if we're, playing on age tropes in society, which you know I hate to do. The face of ageism right here. Is that having long hair is a very young look. So when you're older, you shouldn't have like super long hair. I think there, I didn't know the limit was 25. I was thinking like 70. Right. But but that is sort of a thing that young, long hair is is a much younger look. And you know how people have like, I want to talk to the manager haircuts when they're old enough to talk right. to the manager. Like, just yet another impossible beauty standard for women. An, an impossible age standard. Like, who can even keep up with these standards? They're confusing. And these rules. Like, I gotta get a notebook and start writing them down. Yeah. So many to keep up with. So many to keep up with. But my hair is the longest that it's ever been. And I just wanted to keep it that way for a while. But what's crazy is I got a haircut the week before we went into quarantine. And I was so excited about it because I was like, my hair's gonna grow this entire time. And like, that's exactly what happened. It's almost six months later. And I had to get another haircut, even though it feels like I just got one. And you have nothing to show for your haircut like your first one oh like you don't get to take your haircut anywhere yes but the growth that I experienced and like the length my hair was yesterday on this show or no I was wearing a bun two days ago is what I have to show for it because it would never have grown that much if it wasn't so healthy at the beginning of that's true I just can't believe that like I'm feeling very full circle so I just can't believe like when we started quarantine and like where we are now we're literally first of all in a different space I know we um I have gained like so much weight. Um, I have absolutely like accomplished nothing in the last six months. I am, have crippling anxiety. It's just, it's really amazing what six months can do. It's amazing what six months can do, but here I, I, I've got to just look on the bright side for of you course. because you're incapable of it. And I just want to say on Monday's episode, I was feeling in a particularly good mood and I think I was the most positive I'd ever been. And I never got more messages about how weird I was on the show. Everyone was like, is she okay? She was a lot today. So you know what? <laughs> I'm back to being negative. That's what you guys want. Easy. You got it. Okay, here's the bright side. First of all, you've made it through. You've made it this far. And, and honestly, it's, it's a challenge. Yes. You've gotten up every day. You've done this show. And it's been fabulous. That's true. You're putting true. smiles on people's faces. That's true. You've accomplished that. You've given people something to look forward to. You've taken care of your little man. That's the most important. And he's extremely well adjusted for the quarantine. Extremely. I think he was actually made for the quarantine considering how much he just Loves to stay at home. He is agoraphobic. Um... Also, you look beautiful, stunning, and smart. Thank glowing. you. Glowing. Also, you. I do feel like of the people that I know, you are doing the okay. best. You said that to me the other night, and it's just because, like, everyone yes. I know is doing so badly. No, it's, yes, technically, I do thrive in agoraphobic situations. Like, yes. I, I really, the whole staying at home thing doesn't bother me. It's just like the the atmosphere like the climate like the way people have been speaking to one another and like even my tiktok it's just like videos of people like in parking lots in like walmart's like getting in fights over face masks like just this climate is like killing me like this hostility and like we've never been more divided and you know me i'm i stand firmly in the middle on almost everything so it's like it's killing me it's killing me and it's like i thought before quarantine like you know we were a country divided, but now I just feel like everyone fucking hates each other and the way they speak to each other, even in like, even in our comment section on Instagram, like the way people speak to each other, it's just crazy. And like, that is, that's what I hate. Like, I can't stand, that's like the, the thing that's been bothering me the most is just like, how did we get here? Yeah. Remember when Dr. Burks was on our show and at the beginning she was like, what's really been amazing about all this is like everyone from both sides of the aisle, from private to public sector has really come together to want to help during this pandemic. And like, We just went so downhill from that moment. Like when she said it, she like cursed it because the opposite is now. And like that's just type of, you know, this climate just gives me anxiety. That's what it is. Yeah. You're not alone in that. I know. You are not alone. I think a lot of people feel that way. I think a lot of people who watch the show feel that way. And 
I don't know what to tell you because I feel the same way. It's really like scary. And that's really why I'm looking forward to the hiatus just to like unplug from that toxicity. And like, I wish I was the type of person who could just like throw my phone to the other side of the bed and like not be on it. But first of all, it's my job. Second of all, I have an addiction. So it's like, I'm forcing myself to like, Put, I put myself forcibly like in the center of all this toxicity and it's just bad. So I'm really looking forward to taking some time off. Like I, I want to take a break from so much of our job is like knowing what's going on in the world. And yeah. it's very heavy. Yeah. And I just want a little bit of like a, 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 a second time out. I think that's very, very fair. And I think it's important for everyone to take time like that for yourselves if you feel that you need it. Yes. So. Fabulous. Yeah. It's. So- I concur. So I think we we should just give them the best damn show they've ever had in their fucking lives. The best damn show. I have so much to give today. Oh, good. Okay. I think it's my haircut. And I like my outfit. A haircut really does add a little oomph to a little bounce in your step. Mm-hmm. Let's do it. Okay. Without further ado, it is time for the fast five stories that you need to know before you wake up and take a bite out of your morning toast. <laughs> And I know some people may have forgotten, but it is still technically summer and you still do need to look fabulous. And that's why I'm so excited. It's Friday. We are highlighting a black owned business and today is Arrow and Phoenix. Kayla Bell, Arrow and Phoenix's founder, at just seven years old, displayed a love for design with a keen eye for detail that has since taken her places she never could have imagined. When she was in middle and high school, she found that as a 38 triple D cup, finding a comfortable swimsuit top that wasn't created with someone else's grandmother in mind was nearly impossible. So she began creating her own. Arrow and Phoenix was born with bold colors, 90s influence styles, and comfortable silhouettes by an owner who prides herself on providing only the best of quality. With its wide variety of sizes, Arrow and Phoenix offers the bikini that would give the shyest woman the self-confidence to talk to the hottest guy at the pool bar. It will inspire the hardest working 24-year-old law student to let her hair down every once in a while and that her bikinis would always be tied to some wild memory of a bachelorette party everyone remembers but vowed to never speak again. The Arrow and Phoenix mission is simple. To empower women, give back, and provide luxurious, creative, and comfortable swimwear that celebrates having a good time. Arrow and Phoenix's swimwear is a sustainable swimwear brand created by a self-proclaimed beach bum who wanted to invite other millennials into her world of fashion and sustainable living. They offer comfortable, supportive, and luxuriously sexy swimwear made from recycled materials, which takes 70% less energy to manufacture. Arrow and Phoenix's pieces are handcrafted in Los Angeles with pieces that range from Brock sizes A to H. They also offer skincare products, including the Skin Silk Bronzing Oil. While the bronzing oil gives the best glow and smells great, most importantly, it is great for your skin. They blend all The blend of these specific oils keeps your skin firm, clear, and moisturized. The aloe vera oil keeps your skin from getting sunburned. An almond oil with add, added 24 karat gold clusters will give you the perfect summer glow. To shop Arrow and Phoenix and see the products like the Marie One Piece offered in sizes small through triple XL, go to arrowandphoenix.com. That's A R R O W and Phoenix.com. Or you can follow them on Instagram, Arrow and Phoenix Swim. Again, that's A R R O W and Phoenix Swim. Fabulous. Check it out. I mean... Check it out. That is so pertinent to the situation. A brand that has titties in mind. Like, that is just everything of the sort. A swimsuit brand that has titties in mind. Because I feel like we've gotten to a, a, a good place in the bra department. Yes. But the swimsuits, it's so hard. It's so hard. And it's like, you want to look cute. And like, if you have big boobs, like half the bathing suits do not support your boobs. And like, then you have neck problems and you're walking around the beach with like a, a humpback. Yeah. It's... It's truly our cross to bear. So. It's truly it's our cross to bear. Fabulous. Arrow and Phoenix. Okay, first story, big news of the day. Still sort of a rumor, but it seems like there's some truth to it. Yeah. So we'll discuss all facets of it. The Bachelorettes Becca Kufrin and Garrett Urogian break up after two years together. I had absolutely no idea how to pronounce his last name. Did you not know where I was going to go with that? No, but like well, you, according you're to my a tra- scholar. No, no, no. According to my track record of pronunciations. Um, yeah, you pronounced probably- um, Tori Lane's name wrong yesterday. Linez. I think Linez, Tori it's Lanes? What it's, did you say? It's Lanes, and I said Lanez, which is really... That's so you. It's so me, like the Maj Dijon. Yeah, no, you just making it like French. Yeah, you know there's a highway in um, New, New York. York, New Jersey. It's spelled on the sign, M-A-J space... No, M-A-J period, because M- it's an abbreviation for Major Deegan. Well, you're, you're ruining... M-A-J no, but- period, D E. E G A N. So when I first saw it, when I I always thought it was the Maj Dijon, and I was on the phone once with someone when I was in the car with Olivia, and I was like, we were going to New Jersey. I was like, I'll be there soon. We're on the Maj Dijon, and (laughs) 
she was like, what did you say? I was like, I said, we'll be there soon. <laughs> it's Major Deegan. It's Major Deegan. And even when I see it, like it always takes me a second to remember that it's Maj Dijon. Oh, I'm ever, sorry that it's <laughs> Major Deegan. Ever since you like titled it Maj Dijon, it, According to me, it is the Maj Dijon now. And it's just and more it's, fabulous. It's so fabulous. You sorry, look at you just trying to put a positive spin on a long drive. <laughs> on New Jersey. Yeah. Creme de la creme. That means cream. Fabulous time to remind you my comedy special is still available. Don't worry. It will be there for you forever. In the quarantine, if you're missing me, head over to Amazon Prime, Apple TV, type in Disgraced Queen, or just type in Claudia Ashray. My comedy special will come up. You know, I have to really stop promoting it because, like, it's... Everyone's watching it. Like, I don't even have to tell them. But if you wanted to, just check it out. Sometimes you need to be reminded because there's so much content that I put on my, like, content mm -hmm. uppers list that I forgot about. You know, I still haven't watched the Ben Platt special. But if what? someone was reminding me every day on the show that I love to watch it, I would have watched it by now. Well, we're going on our trip and we're pretty much not leaving our house. And our house has, like, a fabulous big movie room. And I think that we should just have, like, a nightly event. We need to watch She's the Man. Yeah, we need to make a list. Let's yes. start, Let's start like, a Google a Doc. A content uppers list. I don't want to watch fucking Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. Like, I don't want to watch something. <laughs> dark i don't want to watch anything world war ii like i would just like to keep it light i'm trying to keep my mind afloat okay okay fine let's get to this story for once and for oh, all yeah year again two years after falling in love on season 14 of the bachelorette a source tells e news exclusively the couple's engagement is off in recent weeks the reality tv stars were the subject of split rumors um and sorry but yeah, split people, were, people were speculating. Were, people were speculating and there was a lot of um, stuff on Becca's podcast where she talks about her relationship because it was clear that they kind of have like different political views. Yeah, you know, before quarantine, I would have said that these, of all the Bachelor people, like I think that they are going to make it. Like they're OTP, like I really felt strongly about them. And then in the past couple episodes of Bachelor Happy Hour, she's just been alluding very vaguely to, you know, there could be potentially trouble in paradise. Um... And Rachel was also very outspoken about her dislike for Garrett. And it, I guess it just turns out, even though, like, we knew this before. Yeah. Because he had to, like, issue an apology or something. Um, we knew before that, like, they didn't align politically. But I guess this climate, like, you really just can't avoid it, especially if it's, like, in your own house, if you disagree with someone politically. And, and I feel like that's what happened. Yeah. Inu says the conflict is part of the reason why that they are going their separate ways. And, quote, Becca is still very upset with Garrett's comments and the controversy surrounding it. Their lifestyles don't mesh anymore. Garrett wants different things. And they came to a realization that they aren't compatible anymore. Well, she also left a comment on the E! News Instagram. Saying, like, who's this source? She didn't deny that the story was true, which is really what you do when you comment on an E! News pick. Yes. So I think she read this story. She saw what this source is saying, that their lifestyles don't mesh anymore, that they're breaking up because of this controversy and she's like who's this source saying that maybe that that part's not true but the fact that they're broken up is true also I thought maybe she was being shady and alluding to her sort the source being Garrett there's no way because um Garrett it says the source says that Garrett is doing a backpacking trip in the wilderness which is on his Instagram right oh. now he's with his buddies and is taking time for himself they're trying to keep it low-key because they're still working things out but the relationship is definitely done so I think Garrett is the much more private one of the two of them being in the wilderness like backpacking yeah. with his buddies he's not calling up e-news and, and spilling the yeah. tea I just thought it was interesting that she like made a comment on it which is really only something you do when you want to like dispel rumors mm -hmm. not just comment on them you know what I mean yeah and so I went I was going through their Instagrams and it feels like all the signs have been there for a while that they're not together they hadn't posted together since May I think she had posted like captions talking about her podcast and how she kind of feels like she came up short and in relation to her relationship with Garrett like she doesn't know kind of where they stand or mm. and so she hasn't been quiet about this so right no it's I not shocking it's not shocking I think for sure the stuff that we saw with politics can cause a rift in their relationship. But I also think that there's more to the breakup than just that. Yeah, of course. I mean, this is like now a conversation being had. And like, I think a lot of people are divided on whether or not you can or should be with, a, with someone who you don't align with politically. Like a lot of people, I was reading the comments and the comments on this post on our Instagram were very heated. A lot of people feel like, you know, your politics really are like a direct line to like your core values and beliefs. And if that doesn't align with someone, like it's more than just politics. It's also like your, your beliefs and like your whole belief system. And then a lot of people feel like you should be able to coexist with someone who is different politically than you. Um, I don't know. I mean, once again, I see both sides. I think it depends on like the level at which you are political, yeah. you know, and how much it is involved in your daily life. That's true. But I don't know. I just feel like these two 
seemed really solid, but then on the other hand, they were engaged for two years and, and it doesn't seem no like they had plans to get married. But then on the other hand, like they moved to Carlsbad, California and seemed like they were living like a normal, happy life. Honestly, like the vibe that I got was that like they were so happy and that they didn't really care so much about like the fame and they just wanted to like live together and they were grateful to the show for bringing them together. But like this was like the end of their story and like they were just going to go and live a happy life in Carlsbad. Yeah. But then I guess like this podcast sort of threw a wrench into all of that. And I feel like some people feel like she broke up with him because of what he said. And I'm, I think other people feel like he broke up with her because she didn't have his back. Right. Which again, both, both things are seem, possible. Okay. But then there's another layer to this story because there's yes. a rumor going around right now. Um, it was posted on Twitter by the bachelor suitcase guy mm -hmm. is the account. And Long story short, he said that pretty much like night one of Tasha's new season was pretty low energy and they didn't get really the content that they were hoping for. So the producers decided to fly in Hannah Ann mm -hmm. and a newly single Becca Kufrin. And there's a paparazzi picture of Hannah Ann walking into the hotel with a suitcase. Oh, shit. She's she's confirmed there. But then but Reality to, Steve says it's like, you know, they bring in old people to like give advice. Right. Oh, interesting. But they weren't on the same season. That doesn't really... And what, by the way, not to be rude, but like, what can Hannah Ann give advice for? Like, she didn't win and she's not... She actually won, but she didn't... You know what I mean? Yes. Um, and that newly engaged Becca would be there too, and there would be a panel of bachelorettes, and each week they would give roses. Like, the guys wouldn't choose a la Caitlyn and... Uh, Britt. Britt. But they would each be the bachelorettes, and they would keep... Like, they would each date all of these guys, which is an interesting theory. Like, what if they both fall for the same guy? then it's drama. Right. Then the guy has to choose. And then it, the guy becomes the bachelor. Right. It's kind of like Bachelor in Paradise, but less women, more men. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of like the idea in general, but the Becca thing sort of throws a wrench into it because that feels like really soon. Fresh. I, I mean, I like the idea as a show conceptually, like maybe as a spinoff, but to be honest, like Tasha is the bachelorette. Like, can we just leave it at that? Like, I I'm really satisfied with that. And I think a lot of people are really happy with it. And to... To have her share the spotlight when honestly she really deserves it, mm -hmm. it's it's like annoying. Yeah, it is annoying. And this whole like argument that the night woman's low energy, so they brought in two more people. I just feel like again, it's kind of like what we said about E News yesterday. It's like they made a choice and then they didn't even give it time to like of course bear fruit. And of course, it's going to be a little hard to have chemistry immediately because everyone's like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, but you know, that's like, what they edit crazy shit all the time. They literally use tear crying sounds from when a girl is on the bachelor and they play it over her while she's on bachelor in paradise like they can make anything seem like reality they make mountains out of molehills all the time like why is this any exception yeah and again i just can't help but think like we would not be in this position if claire carley had respect <laughs> i'm really like I, i'm continually annoyed by it oh and oh my god um oh also i meant to say spoiler alert but now it's starting to feel like they want us to know it, they want us to know but also that spoilers are kind of irrelevant because it's like we all know what's going to go down sort of it's all about how it goes down yeah i just want to find this tweet claire crawley went on twitter um i remember when she released like a series of tweets about how i think it was matt james was on cameo and she yes, like released yes. a bunch of tweets which was like first of all like why do you care Second of all, I just thought it was interesting. She finished off the, this is just so like full circle. She finished off the series of tweets to Matt James, but like subtweeting him. Respect the opportunity you've been given. Respect the rules. Respect me. Are you fucking kidding? L take your own advice, girlfriend. Wow. Isn't that funny? And just like, <laughs> isn't it ironic? Yeah, it is ironic. It's always like, funny when people's own words come back to bite them but there's no way I mean when you fall in love all the rules go out the window you know no not on a show where you're only meeting the person because of the rules like just play the game it's two more weeks yeah but I, I'm glad I'm glad for the situation Same. This season is sounding so interesting whether it's just Tasha and Hannah Ann or if Becca is there too which to me really makes this whole thing seem unfounded yeah I've really actually come to like really like Becca a lot. I think she's like, so, I didn't watch her season. That's when I was like done with The Bachelor. So I felt kind of disconnected to her. And just like now that she's on Bachelor Happy Hour and she's like in, just been in the news a lot recently. Like I think she's really pretty and I like her a lot. I like her too. And we always say the proof is in the pudding. And I think everything that she did after she was The Bachelorette and got engaged mm -hmm. and she was really trying to have like a normal life and, and also be an influencer and she has her clothing line. But she seems like a, a good person. Yeah. 
and I like her too. Um, also, one more thing I wanted to say. Oh shit! Wait, it was good. Could you go back? What did you say again? Um, her clothing line. No, back. It seems like she's a good person. She yeah. proof is in the pudding. You never watched her season. Thank you. Proof is in the pudding. So they've been engaged for two years. Does she keep the ring? Yes, I think so. Sell it. Even though I don't know what the retail value on like Neil Lane jewelry is, but sell it. Yeah. Anyways, I don't know. This story is like kind of sad. I thought that they were going to make it solid. Me too. But the quarantine is coming for everyone. Hell hath no fear. like the quarantine. It's so true. Nobody is safe. Nobody is safe. We'll keep you posted because this is still just a rumor. It's not confirmed, but it feels confirmed. Yeah. But the Bachelorette Instagram has been putting creepy like teasers out and they keep showing it's like a rose petal and then a pair of legs. So it was a rose petal and a pair of legs and then you assumed it was Claire. Then the next day they did one and you saw it was Tasha's legs. So I feel like maybe we're going to get one today and then it's like the three and the first one was like Becca or something because it's not Claire anymore. Interesting. Something to think about. Something to think about. Okay. Next story, exciting news. Kiki Palmer is set to host the MTV VMAs 2020 in Brooklyn. Fabulous. Oh, wait. 2020 in Brooklyn in person? Yes. So Kiki Palmer has been announced as the host of the 2020 MTV VMAs, which will take place at Barclays on August 30th. Quote, we're thrilled to have the multi-talented Kiki Palmer as this year's VMA host. Bruce Gilmer, president of Music, Music Talent Programming for Viacom CBS, um, said Kiki is an energetic force and a quadruple threat with unmatched comedic wit who will make this year's show truly unforgettable. The 37th annual VMAs will take the moon person into uncharted territory as it's the first major award show to be held completely at a venue since the pandemic began. Wow. Um, they're what a month? performer in August 30th. How? I guess. So it, there's performers, uh, BTS, J Balvin, and Doja Cat. And um, BT, oh, sorry, BTS is making their debut there. But I'm assuming that they're having performers, hosts, they're filming it. There's no one in the seats. There's no fans and there's no people to accept awards? And I, I'm going to assume that the exceptions will be like virtual. virtual. Okay, that's a step. I'll watch that. I'll take it. I, will, I would love to see a, a full performance. I mean, I would, I would be watching even if it was virtual just to see Kiki Palmer. She really is a quadruple threat. And I'm so glad like we as a society in the last few years have come to recognize her as a talent because, you know, as children, we've known for years Kiki Palmer was a true talent ever since True Jackson. But I think it took the adult world like a little bit longer. And I'm so glad she's being seen now for her hosting abilities, for her com- comic abilities, acting, singing, dancing. It's fabulous. It's just like you say in your comedy special. The cream always rises. Th- by the way, and that is so true. It's it's so I didn't true. make that up. That's but. just good life advice. Like if you're ever feeling like you're looking, you're, being overlooked, you're being for, overlooked and, and you're everything of the sort and you're just not getting where you want to go and other people who are sort of like faking it till they make it, just remember the cream always rises. And to Kiki the top. Palmer is the perfect example of that. Like someone who just worked hard. She seems like a really nice person who's like professional and fun to work with. And I'm just I, like every time I hear she got a gig, I'm like happy for her. And they canceled Stray Hand Sarah and Kiki. I know. And she was in an interview and she said like she, everyone, like we were just waiting for it to get canceled. Yeah. It seemed that way on Watch What Happens Live, but she said that she has exciting things coming up. She debunked the rumor that she would be on the real, even though that was never like a rumor. It was just like wishful thinking. No, it was like a projection. Like maybe. Yeah. Um, And she said she has exciting things coming up and I think more than VMAs, but that is an exciting thing coming up. It's an exciting thing coming up and I feel like whoever is managing her or her agents like do a good job because they really use her talents. She is multi-talented. She's a quadruple threat, which I hadn't thought of before. Singing, acting, dancing. Comedy. Comedy. Hosting. Quintuple. Quintuple threat. Love to see it. I'm definitely going to see a fellow quintuplet threat. You know, there aren't so many of us. No, they're <laughs> singing. That's where, okay, I think I'm a quadruple threat because I can't sing. Oh, I can't act for shit. I'm sorry, I'm a triple threat. I can dance. I, am I funny? I yeah, so. yeah, of course you are. And I can host. You have a comedy podcast. I yeah. would hope you're funny. Yeah, this podcast is funny. I could say, I'm on it. Define dance. Can, could you say I could dance? Yes, you, can, you have rhythm. rhythm. And I bust it down on, on the bottom. It's a dance floor like almost every night. Okay, so sing, dance, act. I don't know. We're like not good actresses. No. Okay. Sing, dance, comedy host. Sex pot. Mm. Five. Sex symbol. Sex symbol, yeah. Okay, five. We've got a quintuplet. Yeah. Okay, next story. Some 
Maybe new couple news that is interessant. Jennifer Garner is pictured with Bradley Cooper amid John Miller split rumors. Jennifer Garner spent the day with former Alias co-star Bradley Cooper amid rumors that she and boyfriend John Miller have called it quits. The longtime pals were photographed having a beach day in Malibu on Wednesday. A shirtless Cooper was seen rocking a mini man bun and red swim trunks as he made himself comfortable in the sand beside Garner, who was wearing a sweater and a skirt. I saw a lot of people being confused if they really thought this was Jennifer Garner. A lot of people thought it looked like Irene Shayk, oh, his daughter's mom. Interesting. I know. I thought it looked like her too, but then I saw people being like, I think this is Irene Shayk. But so I, didn't I want- don't think that these, like I'm reading this in page six. I saw it in my newsletter this yeah, morning. Yeah, I saw it on TMZ. I don't think that they would have gotten that wrong. I think this is an absolutely sensational pairing. I know, but they're like uh, a source told page six that it's not a romance and that they've just been friends and have been forever. But that's sometimes how some of the best romances start. You have to have a foundation. Like a friendship is a perfect foundation for a romance. Yeah. I but like them is, together. I don't know. Because here's, I'm starting to become really cynical about like celebrities and these, you know, spotted beach pics, yeah. you know, because you, we know at this point that they know that the paparazzi is there and that if they wanted to have a private beach day as friends, they could have found a way to do that and we wouldn't have known about it. Yes. They want us to see these pictures. So I, Why? I feel that way um, about a lot of celebrities, not really Bradley Cooper. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I agree with you. Like, when you see a paparazzi picture and it looks like they've been caught, like, more often than not, like, their publicist is called. Bradley Cooper is not desperate and he's not thirsty for fame. Like, he's true, true A-list. And so is Jennifer Garner. She is, but we are always seeing, like, candid photos of her. She's always in a park. She, always. She always. Loves, she loves her kids so much. And I feel like someone wanted us to see this picture. Why? I don't know. Maybe they've just be, both been, like, a little irrelevant in quarantine. And they needed a little pick-me-up, a little PR pick-me-up. Maybe. I mean, it's a great PR pick-me-up because it's, like, obviously anyone can come out with a new romance, and that's exciting, but it's a flame that burns hot and fast and, yes. and goes away quickly. But, like, when you're having just a great friendship with two people who the world like loves and respects yes i don't know it's like a different sort of pr move like yeah, no, hey, it's, it's an intellectual publicize, publicize my friendship <laughs> totally i mean i guess i always forget like she went through a lot with ben affleck and now he he calls the paparazzi on himself and added to armas this almost is, every single day this is where we're getting okay so this is good maybe, Go back, keep going maybe she just like wanted something for her herself maybe I don't know. I have a, like I, I agree. I'm so cynical too, and I always assume every paparazzi picture that you see is coordinated. Like very, very rarely do the paparazzi like hunt down a private celebrity and actually get access to them. Like more often than not, it's and, totally orchestrated. And when that does happen, it's very clear that it's an invasion of privacy. So yeah, I just I don't see this for Bradley Cooper, and I don't see him wanting to be associated with this. If I agree. Jennifer Garner wanted it. I think it came from the Garner camp. Interesting. Well, that's the last time they hang out. Yeah. No, but I think he'll see that, like, everybody's really into this. I mean, it's a great couple. It's a but royalty also, A-list. He also, like, does play into these, like, check out my, my great friendship, like, with Lady Gaga. We're going to let people think that we have something going on. I mean, he is actually a tease now that I think about it. He is. And this feels like they have a movie coming out together, but there's no mention of that. But watch, that's next. Oh, yeah. Maybe this is, like, a really, like, premeditated yeah strategic move that'd be interesting i'd love to see them in a movie together i'd love to see jennifer garner back on my screen always i'd love to see him back on my screen he also will. because like everything that he is in is just inherently good yeah and that way i would be seeing a good movie and i'd love to see good movies it's one of my favorite pastimes it is okay some exciting beauty news megan the stallion is the new face of revlon oh wow mm-hmm the rapper was announced on Thursday as the new global brand ambassador for makeup powerhouse Revlon. Quote, I've always set the bar high for myself with everything I do, but to now be a brand ambassador for Revlon, it feels like a new level, she said yeah. in a press release. To me, the Revlon brand stands for both beauty and female strength, and I'm excited to define what that means to a new generation of women. And she's not just a pretty face. She's also seriously skilled in the makeup department. She did her own makeup for the photo shoot using all Revlon products. This is one of the photos. Oh, wow. So cute. Like sickening. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is this is huge. Like, I really can't believe like how Megan the Stallion has like popped on the scene and like really taken off so fast. And we spoke about her yesterday. I have so much respect for her. And this is awesome. And I feel like she'll be on commercials, right? That's yeah, what the face hopefully. of Revlon does. Yeah, hopefully. I, well, she did her own makeup for the shoot, presumably also because of like the pandemic. Yeah. But I think it's like 
it is really cool when people find ways to take the situation that we're in and like make what they're doing even better because of it. And I feel like this is one of those examples. She probably would have had her makeup professionally done for a Revlon photo shoot, but instead we're getting to see how she truly uses Revlon products. No, totally. And I feel like pretty much a lot of celebrities run into the beauty space because it is a, like a cash grab. It is good money. And to know that Megan Thee Stallion, A, can do her own makeup, loves makeup, and clearly is very good at it, that makes just like a better, more authentic brand partnership. You see Alicia Keys announced that she's launching a skincare line? Yes. Did you see the James Charles stuff? I did. James Charles like posted like a shady tweet. Like, I wish people would just like stop starting makeup lines who like don't even like makeup. At, at first I thought it was about Addison because... They're like best friends. And she just announced her makeup line. Right. Then he deleted it and rephrased it because he said, I rephrased this because a lot of people thought I was talking about my friends, which I'm not. And then he deleted the whole thing and he essentially thought that Alicia Keys announcing that she was doing a skincare line was her doing a beauty line. Well, but he obviously just saw a headline that said, it was kind of misleading. I think it said like, be it said beauty. And right. when you see beauty, I think you assume makeup. And Alicia Keys one of the many reasons why we absolutely love her, like vowed to stop wearing hair and makeup to like public award shows and just in public life for like the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. And so... I think shorter than that, but yeah. Whatever. James has, uh, was upset when he thought that Alicia Keys was coming out with a makeup line um, and was just doing it like as an easy cash grab and like subtweeted her and then ended up deleting and apologizing. One, because she's not coming out with a makeup line, she's coming out with a skincare line. And two, and he said it himself, he's like, why am I like the gatekeeper of the beauty community? Like, anyone is welcome. Right, yeah. She's, it's um, a partnership with Elf Cosmetics. And oh. she has amazing skin, and, and it's an amazing partnership. She has amazing skin. I will 100%. And I just trust her. Like, when she was hosting the Grammys, and it was, like, the day that Kobe died, like, I trusted her before, but, like, I gave her my whole soul then. Like, I just feel like everyone really, like, wanted to lay in her bosom and just, like, be caressed by her. I actually recently watched her CMT Crossroads with Maren Morris. How was it? It was sensational. Like, I actually went on, like, down a rabbit hole of a lot of CMT Crossroads. And for those who don't know, CMT Crossroads is this program that CMT, the country music channel, um, puts together where they pair, like, big pop stars and big country stars and they do a small concert. They sing three of the country songs and three of the pop songs. And you both, you get to see, like, a fun spin on a country song and a fun spin on a pop song. And sometimes you can see, like, when they just really don't care. Like, I watched the Thomas Rhett and Nick Jonas one and, like, they just... They were just not vibing, like, for me. I watched Jason Derulo and Luke Bryan, and they got along famously. Like, it was fabulous. And with Alicia Keys, I feel like she really, like, learned Maren Morris' songs and, like, put her own spin on it, and it was, like, so genuine. And she was being so funny, and they were having so much fun up there. And it was really, like, a fabulous pairing. Really, really good. I highly recommend it. It's on YouTube. Oh, that's so great. Have you seen Katy Perry, Casey Musgraves? It was the first one I ever saw. Of course I have. It was absolutely sensational, sickening. Like, I don't know who did a better job. No. It's, it's so crazy. And the craziest thing about the two of them is that Casey Musgraves was a songwriter. Yep. And she wrote Follow Your Arrow and presented, presented it, it to Katy Perry. And Katy Perry was like, this is your song. You should sing it. And then Casey became an artist. Casey became Casey. I hope that they have a good friendship. Me too. I it's mean, a that, really cute story. The CMT Crossroads is so long ago. Like, I know. They both look so different so now. So much could have changed. So much could have changed. And you never know. But I feel like they're neither one. I mean, well, Katy Perry was like involved in the Taylor drama. But neither one of them are really prone to like beef. Yeah. I agree. That's a good thing to watch. Another content upper. Yeah, I watched it over the weekend. It was just fabulous. It was entertainment. It was music. And it was um, very high quality. Well, speaking of music. Oh, sorry. And the one that I tuned in for, which was unbelievable, was Zach Brown Band and Shawn Mendes. Mm. It was so good. Snitch loves that one. It was, like, empowering. Wow. Speaking of music, Taylor Swift on Blake Lively's daughter in Betty, she said, I named the characters after my friend's kids. Taylor Swift recently introduced her new song, Betty, from her folklore album on country radio and shared the meaning behind her single, which revealed the name of Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds' third daughter. Quote, James has lost the love of his life, basically, and doesn't understand how to get it back. I think we all have these situations in our lives where we learn to really, really give a heartfelt apology for the first time, she explained of the song, which uses the name of Lively and Reynolds' eldest daughter, James. Quote, everybody makes mistakes. Everybody really messes up sometimes. And this is a song that I wrote from the perspective of a 17-year-old boy. I've always loved that in music, you can kind of slip into different identities and you can sing from other people's perspectives. So that's what I did on this one. I named all the characters in this story after my friend's kids. And I hope you like it, she con concluded, confirming that she used the names of their daughters, including Inez, as inspiration. Inez. And is Betty also one of the kids' names? Um... They have three daughters? 
Yeah. So the kids' but names are James, Betty, and Inez. I, they hadn't announced Inez yet, so now we know that that's that. Their kid's name is Betty? Betty. Oh, sorry, yeah. they haven't announced Betty yet. So, so we Be- had James and Inez, and now we have Betty. Oh, their kid's name is Betty. She just announced it. Oh, okay. Sorry. It's a little confusing. It is confusing. I just don't keep up with, like, honestly, like, celebrities' kids' names. I just feel like they didn't name their kid Betty. But they did. And you know what? I'm going to say Maybe it's a different friend's kid. I've, no, it's 100%. Those are the three. She has, they have three daughters, James, Betty, Inez. Okay. Right? Yeah. Um, I'm going to say something incredibly controversial. And, like, honestly, we might lose followers because of it. You know what? Go for it. I don't like Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively. Like, as a couple, I find their brand to be so annoying. And, like, the way, like, he's, like, cropping her out of pictures, like, that's funny. Like, the way he's, like, mean to her on Twitter and, like, that's supposed to be, like, funny. Like, I just, I don't subscribe to their, like, love story at all. No, I agree. And I feel like we've said that before. And that's not new news. I just Um, don't like them. No, yeah. They, I, and we, yeah, no, I agree with you. There's something about them that I just, like, don't relate to. Yeah. And... I'm just, like, not interested. Thank you. I'm so glad you concur. Yeah. No um, worries. Can we talk about Real Housewives, please? Let's get into it. Not only was it an amazing episode, it, it was actually in the right episode, but it was the 200th episode anniversary, and then yes. we got an absolute sensational Watch What Happens Live with Luann celebrating. It was all Roni-themed. It was... I've actually changed Rahoni to Roni, because Andy said it, like, 500 times on the Watch What Happens Live last night, and I realized I've been saying it wrong my whole life. Okay, maybe I'll get there one day too. But it's right annoying. Now. It doesn't sound right. Roni. Roni. Okay. Rahoni. Um, okay, but let's talk about the episode of Housewives First, and then we'll do Watch Trap and Slide. The ladies are in Mexico. Um, that night unfolds where Luann is once again just victimized by Dorinda. Like, in just trying to do her part. First of all, there were so many layers to that whole fight. Ramona was being so nasty to Dorinda, who came down there to check on her. And do I think Dorinda might have a drinking problem? 100%. Is that the time to talk about it and be like, to say it in such a nasty way, like, you need to go to AA. Like, as if that's an insult. Ramona was so wrong. But did she lie? No. Um, So she was wrong there. And then, like, Ramona's just being so weird, like, with her fixation on drinking water. Like, she's went through, like, a, a, like, a lifestyle change and didn't tell anyone. Like, she doesn't want to talk about vagina. She doesn't want to drink anything but water. And she doesn't want to be associated with Leah. Like, how, when? Yeah, I don't know. I feel like there used to be a time when it was, like, Ramona and Sonia, like, drunk and, and being funny. And she has just totally removed herself from that equation where she doesn't want to be drunk and and drinking like how she used to be agreed she didn't tell anyone I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing that she's had that realization but the judgment that she passes on to everyone else like isn't um fun isn't it's not nice and but I also do agree with you like she's talking about yes in that instance Dorinda actually was trying to be nice which is like a new thing for her but she's talking about the general landscape and she's not wrong. No. And I just think like there, it's one thing if Ramona wanted to make a change in herself and like she is, you know, of a certain age and like her running around in a bathing suit, getting wasted, like isn't necessarily like the best look for her. I totally agree. And I respect that. And her wanting to kind of rehabilitate her image is one thing, but to be so judgmental of other people, like you're actually just doing less, more damage on your reputation because now people think you're judgmental and like you can be reserved and conservative and not drink a lot without shaming others for doing that. Like that's where Ramona loses me. Yeah, I agree. She, no, she mostly loses me also in like really the, um, hypocrisy. Yeah. Of, like she's always weirdly talking about sex and like, yep. It's, like, nobody asked for it. She's a hunchback who can't see her own but hunch. But then when Leah talks about it, probably just in words that Ramona wouldn't use, but still talking about the same thing. Like, I don't think Ramona says the word pussy, but... But Sonia did at lunch. She said she had a chubby pussy. Right. <laughs> and, and nobody flinched. Like, Ramona just... At, when she was, like, running away from Leah and was like, no, I don't want to hear this. Like, I thought Ramona was about to say, like, I'm 60 plus years old. Like, I don't want to say the like I don't want to hear the word pussy and I would have been like okay but she's like I'm a good Catholic girl but then like they flash back to all the scenes where she's of course I'm not I'm honestly I'm not buying any like any of what Ramona's selling no but it's weird because Ramona's like in certain situations like she's half right but no she's like 49% right and then 51% wrong and so she's wrong and but by the way her whole philosophy and she's just She's so hypocritical. And even that conversation with Leah where they buried the hatchet where I thought Ramona was finally like being an adult, she couldn't even recognize her own hypocrisy. And it was so frustrating. And I was really surprised that Leah just didn't fucking lay into her because I don't know how you hold a conversation with her. It's just like rules are different 
there are different rules for different people. There are different rules for different times of day. And there's just like no consistency when it comes to Ramona and how to be her friend. And it's infuriating. Yeah. And then she just has like mood swings. Like in the restaurant, she just gets up when they're having so much fun. They were having so much fun. That was a really fun really night. Cute scene. I can't. It's so frustrating for me. Like Dorinda, I like her sometimes. Like when, I, when she was really defending Leah last week and then the early of this week, I was like so on her side. But literally, like, the way she treats Lu- Luann is so insane. And I think if you really want to know, like, the, the nucleus of what's wrong with Dorinda is the conversation she had with Leah in the morning. She came in, she tried to rewrite history. And then when Leah actually pointed out, like, Luann was the messenger, she was trying to help, and you fucking attacked her for no reason. She, like, wouldn't have it. Like, she's so irrational, and she refuses to acknowledge even one thing that she does wrong. And, like, that, that whole conversation, if you ever need to know what's wrong with Dorinda, like, just watch that conversation. She was so wrong. She was so drunk, lying that she was drunk, refused to accurately uh, describe what had happened and was not interested in hearing what actually happened from the most sober, so, sober person in the room. Yeah. She was especially infuriating to me in this episode, and I am at, like, a point with, like, I don't... I'm... You can't I, support I can't, her. Like, I, honestly, like, I can't stand what she brings to the show. She's so cruel. The only person she's nice to is Sonia because she only, like, because Sonia is, and she keeps trying to, like, bring Sonia down and be like, Sonia's going through so much. And yeah. it's like, I mean, Sonia's actually kind of fine. She's she fine. I mean, she's so not drunk. On her birthday. She's such, like, a, light. a great, like, a good person and a light energy. S- energy. And so, like, Great spirit. And Dorinda's always trying to make it seem like she's not doing well. And yeah. Like, she doesn't want her to, to be doing well. Not only that, I think Dorinda for the last couple of years has really successfully deflected her own problems onto other people. Like someone else is always going through something. But we're only down to five women now. And clearly Dorinda's the one going through something. She definitely has a problem with drinking. She definitely has not properly grieved the loss of her husband. Like there is a lot to unpack there. And I think... Hers keeps saying, like, Dorinda's going through a lot. Sonya's going through a lot. Is her wanting nobody to realize that, like, she's the one going through it, but she's acting so abhorrently. Like, we have no choice but to recognize, like, she's the one in a bad spot. Right. And when she, when the conversation with Luann happened and she was so wrong, at first I was like, they're talking about how Dorinda's drinking too much. And here she is, like, being too drunk to even understand how mean she's being. Mm-hmm. And then the next morning I thought, you know, she would have that, like, drunk remorse. But like, she was like, I wasn't even drunk. So, okay, are you... What's t- worse? Are you drinking too much or are you too mean? Like, yeah. I mean, t- to be honest, I never really liked Dorinda. And she started to grow on me. But she was, like, a fan favorite for the last few seasons. But, like, she got away with the most abhorrent behavior. I think, literally, one of the most chilling and polarizing scenes in the history of Housewives of New York is the scene where she shows up absolutely blacked out to the dinner in Miami with Bethany and her charity business Mm -hmm. partners before flying to Puerto Rico to help victims of the hurricane. And she's wasted fighting with the guy, like discrediting all of all of his philanthropic efforts. And like, this is Bethany's business partner. It was awful. And Bethany was, was harsh with her, but like, that's what she needed. And like that whole thing just got dropped because none of the other women were there. And like, there has been this past for Dorinda for so many years when everyone is so quick to call Sonia an alcoholic, literally for her entire time on the show. Look what happened to Luann. Do I think Luann is an alcoholic? No. Do the women never let her forget what she went through? Yes. Fucking Dorinda brings it, brings it up every episode. To be honest, I think they all have healthier drinking habits than Dorinda. No, I agree. And I think that in this, in the scheme of, of the whole thing, like who's the most right in the group and who's the most wrong, even though like everyone comes from for Ramona all the time and like she doesn't help her own case and she's very flawed as a person, I think Dorinda is like the meanest. The most the, problematic. The most villainous housewife in New York. She's self-destructive. She's so evil sometimes. When she said, I have a turkey baster at home, Tinsley, here, go have a baby. <gasps> that was the worst thing I'd ever heard in my life. Like, seriously. Right. And, and nobody even, even flinched. It doesn't even get mentioned. Not, it's crazy. Like, some of the, I agree. Like, everyone's so quick to, like, call out Ramona because she's a beast. Like, when she called them sturbans, she's an animal. And she's really part of, like, an older generation of housewives that doesn't really exist anymore. But I feel like Ramona doesn't get away with anything. When she does something fucked up, she's constantly called out. By the on group, it, by the audience. Which she should be. Like, she has done, even in this episode, like the commenting on Leah's mental health, like, but everyone lets her know at every turn why what she's doing is wrong. And she is forced to apologize and, and hopefully learn from it. Mm-hmm. Every single thing that Dorinda does is just not even mentioned. And it's not helpful when Luann is like up, clearly upset by Dorinda. And it's just like, I'm going to sweep it under the rug because we're on this trip. No, something has changed in Luann. Like she is so elegant. Like 
she really came out of this season like as my number one like she's so rational she's so reasonable she's so funny she really controls her drinking except it's frustrating to watch that conversation in the cabana with dorinda because she just lets dorinda roll right over her and like the reason why dorinda gets away with so much is because more often than not luann is one of her victims and she doesn't say anything yeah well, so I think this is what hap- this is what's happening with Luann and why we all love her so much right now because she's always been sort of polarizing, mm-hmm. either like totally in the right or totally or, in the wrong. Totally in the wrong. We're like she's going through so much. We're gonna stand by her. Yeah. But this happens with housewives sometimes. I remember it happened with Lisa Rinna a few seasons ago when it's like when you're so used to being in the mix and like slinging shit at other people like it gets exhausting and you kind of take a back seat and you're on the sidelines and you're like hey like this is kind of nice not having to go through it all the time watching the other women go through it and I kind of like being like a sideline character right yep. now and not having like this burden on my shoulder and the storyline be all about me right I'm sure it's exhausting and anxiety inducing eventually they get bored yeah. because they're at a reunion and no one's really talking to them they weren't yeah. part of the storyline so then the next season they come back stronger and I think that did happen to Rinna mm-hmm. I think she took a break after Munchausen and she just became very like chippy. uh, Still funny and interesting, but not drama pot stirring. Yes. Now she's back to drama pot stirring. Luann is is having that moment right now where it's been a couple of rough seasons for her where it's just like was all on her back, good, bad, otherwise. And now she's just like, I want no part of this. I'm enjoying my vacation in Cancun. Yeah, right. And you know what? It makes you likable, but you don't have longevity that way. I know. But you know what? Sometimes you need a break. Sometimes you need a break. And honestly, I enjoy watching Luann. I think she's funny. And like, I actually really like her and I really respect her. But see, with especially with New York, the women have so many personalities. Like I have at times in my life literally hated Luann like I thought she was such a terrible person for what she did to Bethany on that reunion when she called her Lyanne remember and she accused her of having uh, a relationship with Dennis who was married like I thought that and after all Bethany did for her like I was just I was so done with her and now I just absolutely love Luann the women on New York really it's like they wake up and they feel a certain way and they're a different person that day than they were the day before and it's actually exhausting to keep up with it yeah and you know what I've been starting to assess like when I think about which housewives I like and which ones I don't like I think about, do I like their scenes when it's just them, like, in their house doing Mm -hmm. their regular life thing? And honestly, for most of the women of New York, like, no. No, definitely not. I really don't. For Beverly Hills, like, I could watch every single one of them in their home scenes, whatever they're doing, like, I'm here for it. Also, someone wrote this to me recently. I forget who it was. It was just um, a viewer saying it's so interesting because we're in New York and we're so hard on the New York Housewives and we think it's like the worst show. Yeah. And they listen to a podcast of people who are on the West Coast and they love New York and they think like Beverly Hills is the worst show. No. So I wonder if it's just like... I'm sorry. It's I I refuse. No, no, no. I know, I know. Our critique of Real Housewives of New York has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that we live in New York. I'll tell you what it has to do with the fact. First of all, there's only five of them. They're getting smaller every day. Second of all, none of them have any money. Third of all, they're just, there's no plot. There's just, it's so inconsistent. Nobody keeps up. There's a storyline of a fight and it fizzles out because everyone's either wasted or sobering up. Like, it's exhausting. There's no real storyline. There's no consistency. Honestly, there's no real friendships anymore. Like, even Sonia and Lu- and Ramona. Like, there's no real friendships. And why we love New York is they're rich. They're real friends. Beverly they, Hills. Sorry, New York. But Beverly Hills. Majijan. Majijan. Why we love Beverly Hills, rich, lots of money, glamour, fabulous trips, true friendships on and off screen that adds to some of the complications of Teddy and Kyle on screen. There's so much to unpack. Rinna, the husbands. Rinna and Denise, like R- 30 years of friendship down the tubes after two seasons. The husbands add such a fabulous element when they show up. Not that you need a husband, but it's called Real Housewives. Not any of them even have a boyfriend on New York. Yeah. How did we get here? I don't know. I, I totally agree with you. The show is just, it's like irrational now and like, other shows follow, you know, logic. You said this, you're going to be held accountable. You said it a few months ago to someone, like even when Rinna seasons ago said to Eden Sassoon that uh, Kim was close to death or whatever. Yes. Like a comment like that on New York wouldn't have even been remembered. No, this is the, this is the thing. With all other franchises, like there is a linear storyline. Drama, apology. Accountability. Fault. Yeah, like there. And remorse. New York, it's like fight, drink, sober, cry. Unrelated, forget what someone said to you the night before. Like, there's no consistency. It's exhausting. It's like keeping up with a bunch of maniacs. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bunch of maniacs. And and I like Leah a lot, but, like, she's just not jiving with this group at all. No, and, like, she can't save this whole show. We need more Leahs. We yeah. need um, just more women 
who are new also because we, these women are just so set in their ways and, and, it, the, the, and the viewers at this point have reinforced their behavior. Yes. And especially for Dorinda, like every viral moment she's had is when she's being so mean. So why wouldn't you be so mean? That means you're doing your job right. And you know viral. what? You know what we need? And I'm sorry to be so fixated. And I'm like, we need money. Yeah. It's an aspirational show. It's always been about the rich ladies and how they live and like these women like and Ramona acts so she said on Watch Happens Live the other night someone who makes $500,000 a year is not a lot of money Ramona acts that she has more money than she does like she does not and all of these women need the show none of these women could go off the show and just retire any of the ladies in Beverly Hills could live the exact same lifestyle without the show Half of the women in New York would have to move out of their apartments. So I think the thing with New York is that it's not that they don't have money because I think that they have their housewife related ventures. They get paid a good amount from the show because like the four of them have been on mm -hmm. for a long time. But they all came like 20 years, 10 years ago from like these huge lifestyles, Sonia Morgan, Dorinda, Count. Luann, and they're using all of the money that they make to sort of like keep these lifestyles, but just like not in the ways that keep life interesting you yeah. know like keeping a townhouse where Sonia could sell that townhouse and and, and she get should a yacht. and by the way do you see the apartment she's living in right now right that is not the apartment of a real housewife of New York I'm sorry to be like so but th that's what the show is it's aspirational it's luxury look at the Potomac houses look at the Atlanta houses look at the Beverly Hills houses even New Jersey they all live in super nice houses it's not the same yeah so this has become less of an aspirational show about fancy women in New York than it has just about a, a bunch of random women who happen to live in New York. And who are messy. Love to drink. Messy. Um, but the Watch What Happens Live special was amazing. I was like screaming at the top of my lungs. Like they had so many guests. Heather Thompson, Cindy Barshop, Kelly Cloran, Ben Simone, Jill Zarin. The Pirate showed up and confirmed once and for all uh, Andy. And by the way, Luann did not know that any of these people were coming. She was genuinely surprised. She was like the guest, but then they had surprise visitors and he was like let's put it to bed once and for all like did you and Luann ever mess around when you were in St. Bart's and he said no yeah part of me thought he was being he's a really nice he's guy he's a gentleman I think he's seen the show he knows his role on it that he's become this character and he knows what it would be to Luann if, if he had said yes and so, he knows that she staunchly denies it right so I think regardless of if they didn't like did it or didn't like he's just a, a nice guy, guy. Yeah. he said he's like a, trying to make it as a singer now in no, miami he's so handsome when they so brought handsome. out the pirate like my jaw dropped i really didn't think i could be like moved by any i know surprise and then they did that roni musical that i loved I, I went to the instagram account after and i watched all the videos it's so good it's like such a creative yep. funny idea that's well executed and it's just fun it was a really good episode and andy you know I mean, and I get it, like doing a show every night with like the same and like from home, you really do get burnt out. And you, sometimes you could see like Andy's not so into it, but he was just like excited and happy. And like, he really loves the job. And they had so many fabulous throwback moments, especially to Morocco. They were just talking so much about Morocco. Her and the camel, your oh hubby B. When they did the flash, they were doing the flashback of Luann on the camel like all night. But when they did the flashback of Ramona's <laughs> face, watching <laughs> Luann on the camel, I was laughing so so hard. It actually made me want to go back and restart Real Housewives of New York. And I actually did it once. The first episode was so long. Like it was just, it was a truly a different era. Like the t the cameras and everything. It's just like, it's so blurry. Yeah. It's, it's kind of hard to watch now, but you could start like in the middle. I, I would want to go to like Scary Island. I would want to see, even though, even though that early season where Jill Zarin, Bobby flies her down to that trip with Alex McCord and they kick her out of the house. Like that's iconic. I feel like that's like season three though. Still not it's season It's a little one. blurry. Yeah. It's so funny. Um, the old housewives coming back was hilarious. It was funny, like, who was trying to, like, overstay their welcome. Oh, yeah. But, you know, there was real, you know, there's a movement on Twitter for Heather Thompson to make a return. And I, I feel like you don't like her. her. Oh. No, I love her. I love her. And she was just, there's something about her. She's so smiley and happy. And she was always that way. And when even when she was just on her little virtual screen, like, she was just, like, oozing Exuding. happiness off the screen. I love her. I, I always really liked her. I always loved her. I thought she was a great housewife. And she's one of the few who just left. And she was not fired. Like, she just left because, like, her time was up. Yeah, and Cindy Barshop was there, which I know you were excited about. Jackie sent me a picture of Cindy Barshop on her TV. She's like, it's your girl. And I'm like, what? She's like, you love her. I'm like, no, I feel I don't. like you're always bringing her up. Like, anytime we talk about, like, we go into the archives of Real Housewives who, like, didn't make it, she's your first person. Okay, I mean, I don't feel that way, but if that's the case, that doesn't even mean that I love her. It just means like, no, no. it means I remember her name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is something for you. She was like a little wild on the on the Zoom last night. Yeah, she was. She got it. She upgraded from Quag to Southampton. Very exciting. Um, so it was it was fabulous. I love those types of like um 
anniversary episodes, Watch Robins Live like puts together these specials sometimes. And I think it's really fun and special. Yeah, I thought it was funny. I feel like Luann was just like, what am I doing here? Like, why wasn't Ramona there? Like, Ramona, by the way, Luann didn't even talk the whole time. Andy was talking the whole time. And then all the guests were talking. She was just smiling the whole time. Yes, literally. And she, I think she had fun, but like she had no idea what was going on. No. And I, why was it all on her? No, I mean, it was honestly a sign of respect. I think like the audience is really, really not happy with Ramona these days. Yeah. And I think that they just, they listen, like they're very aware of what the audience likes and doesn't like. And I think that them giving it to Luann was actually a big deal because yeah. Ramona is technically the OG more so than Luann because there was one season where Luann was demoted to friend of housewife. Right. But she was still there and we'll give it to her. And Luann right now I think is the bigger star like with the cabaret and she yeah. is like the fan favorite of New York And right she's now. reasonable and that's really all you can ask from a housewife. Yeah. So that's our TV recap segment. Unfortunately, that means our episode is over. So sad. We will be back. Oh, let me get the actual date. I meant to do that earlier because I keep forgetting. Oh, my God. Theo just threw up. <gasps> oh, my God. Theo. Oh, my, oh my God. God. You know, he threw up last night, too. Oh, my God. Theo. Don't eat it. Theo, 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 Theo. Oh, my God. On our white carpet. All right. Let's just wrap it up and then we'll clean up. Oh, my God. I'm well, so I was, sad. I was ready to, like. It's okay. You don't have to clean up. I'll clean up in a minute. I was ready to sit here and shoot the shit. Um, oh, but wait. Let me take a it. picture of it for my vet. <sighs> we've got to clean up. Hey, Starb, are you okay, little man? Okay, wow, it's starting to smell. Wow, so sad. It's starting to smell. Okay, that was just like an abrupt end to the show. Guys, so, oh, I meant to find the date. Wow, that really, I'm like feeling really sad, like I want to cry. But okay, we are back in studio on September 14th. So we will have five episodes um, until then every Wednesday. So that'll include Dear Toasters. So keep emailing deartoasters at gmail.com. And enjoy the month of August. Try and take care of yourselves. Try and be kind to one another in the words of my favorite host, Ellen. You know, wear a face mask, do a face mask, drink lots of water. And thank you, everyone who's been watching. Thank you to all of our healthcare heroes. Thank you yes. to every essential worker, truck driver, everyone who is just working, working endlessly, helping, doing their jobs, doing the best that they can. We see you. We love you. And we will see you on Wednesday. Not that far. Yeah, off. we'll see you in four days. Goodbye. We'll see you on Wednesday. Bye. Goodbye. 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 Bye.